Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are all healthy and taking good care of yourselves. I am Manat Marwa, a third-year learner of Symbiosis Law School, Noida, and it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this Sunday special session dedicated to a topic that is so much bigger than all of us: nature. The aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. Our esteemed guest for today is someone who lives by these poignant words of Aristotle. Please join me in welcoming the prolific artist, Miss Sangeeta Kadoor. Miss Sangeeta Kadoor finds her niche as a nature and wildlife artist. She aspires to capture wilderness on paper and canvas and draw attention to the fascinating natural world that surrounds us. Her artworks have been published across a wide range of journals, books, and magazines. Her most recent book illustration being Leopard Diaries. She collaborates with many wildlife organizations to build various educational outreach material. Among such big purposeful endeavors has been illustrating for an international publication on hummingbirds of the world in collaboration with Gorga Science Foundation Texas and setting up Holimathi Nature Information Center in Karnataka near MM Hills Wildlife Sanctuary. Miss Sangeeta also maintains a meticulous nature journal and she shares her passion for creating art from the natural world through nature journaling workshops with the hope to inspire a new generation of nature artists. Thank you for gracing us with your presence today ma'am. Over to you. Hello. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. And uh, Mrs. Shilpa, it was so nice to hear about the initiative and the biodiversity cell. Um, it's a great initiative. And um, yes, I do happen to find the copy of your book as well. I met your students in Bangalore and it was really nice uh, meeting them. And um, it's nice to see such an, such an excellent work done by the students. And uh, it's a great compilation, like really happy to know. And uh, I wish you all the best in taking it forward and many more speakers and a uh, whole lot of enthusiasm in all the students. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me here today. Uh, let me share my presentation. Uh, give me a second. Yes, can you all see the presentation? Yes, Sangeeta. Okay. Um, so yes, I'm here to talk to you about my exploration into the wilderness and how I have been, um, you know, taking forward this journey with art and it has been absolutely fabulous. And I think uh, for someone like me who enjoys observing nature, enjoys illustrating, enjoys uh, spending time outdoors, I think being a wildlife artist has been the best way to complement everything and put things together. Um, I think it is this very sustained interest of mine of observing and spending time outdoors is what has um, showed me the bigger picture of things. It has helped me see the web of life you know, how things are interconnected, how the intricacies of nature and in a bigger way, how things are interdependent with each other in, on, on this planet. Um, I've always enamored or like uh, really appreciated the grandeur of this wilderness and how uh, each element is so fragile. It's amazing to see the more you get involved into um, nature and the more you understand the natural world, you realize or you notice how fragile and delicate each of these elements are and how connected they are. And I think it is this, with this hope and the joy of observing wildlife that I want to bring to everybody uh, the the grandness of nature on my canvas. Um, it, is, um, it is, I think, this profound interest of mine that has helped me through the years to show it, represent it in my works as well. 
Uh, being a wildlife artist has made me look at the natural world a lot more intimately, a lot more uh, with a giving, spending time and looking at each and every element and the uh, noticing the details of things has what has made me love the natural world a lot more. These are some of my sketches from my nature journals and where I love to travel or even just in my neighborhood, in my garden where I sit, sit and just try to um, capture what I'm seeing in front of me. Uh, they say that if you haven't drawn, you haven't really seen something. I truly believe that because the more you sit, you might pass a tree, you might admire it and walk away, you might take pictures of it, but it's when you sit and try to draw it or sketch it in your journal or, or your book is when you're really spending time with something and really putting in that amount of uh, uh, observation, that amount of interest to capture it as accurately and scientifically as possible. And that is what reflects in your work. The, it's how you see it. If you learn how to see something, that is what gets reflected onto the canvas. And it is an amazing exercise that I urge each one of you to try pick up a sketchbook and try to journal nature. It, it might seem difficult and some people might say, oh, I can't even draw a straight line. Forget about, you know, um, drawing a leaf or a flower, but I completely uh, deny that thought, that thought because um, it is, if you know how to Right, you all know how to write. Right? You know your alphabets, and the alphabets have all the slanting lines, all the curves, all the angles that you, you I would use in drawing as well. You know, it's it's. What if you say you're not writing an alphabet, but you say you're drawing an alphabet? Um, don't you think that kind of shifts the perspective a little bit? Um, so it is. It's just about tuning your mind removing that mental block of what you have been told earlier, okay? So I think being a wildlife artist had, has really helped me look, look at things more intimately, um, observe things with a lot more, giving it a lot more time and has, in the process, it has helped me build a relationship and understanding of what goes around in the natural world. And for that, I'm, I'm ever so grateful all the time. Um, so making these illustrations or drawing and sketching or art as a you know, bigger way, it has, been, um, it has been one way of, it's, it's just basically reflecting my joy of observing nature that comes into my canvases. And also the, it's basically about documenting. And with each species that I depict in my journals or in my canvases, uh, there's a lot of research that goes into it, a lot of observation. And, and basically at the end of it, a genuine interest that goes into every sketch that I portray. Um, it's not moving to the next slide. I'm sorry. One minute. Mm. Um, I'm sorry. I think it's stuck a bit. It's not moving to the next slide. Give me a minute. Ah, okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, so art also has been my way of showing how amazing how magnificent and how fascinating our natural world is and that is what I try to depict in each of my works. Uh, so I think it has been, um, uh, I've been lucky enough I think as a child to have been uh, surrounded by people who have inspired me. The seed of um, loving nature or respecting nature came to me at a very young age wherein I I, I was driven out to the wilderness um, as a young young kid along with my cousins and they, our parents, our cousins, our, our, our uncles and aunts, everyone showed us these landscapes that uh, would 
definitely fascinate any child. Like you, we were introduced to a binoculars at a very young age and looking at something with a binoculars will definitely like, um, for a kid, it's like a, an amazing, uh, like looking up close at the colors of the birds at such a young age, it definitely makes a difference. And, and just looking at this big elephant in front of you in the forest and uh, it's long tusks and something so different than in the cities, you just keep seeing humans and dogs and cats, but something as big and gigantic as an elephant and, and having a, a, a nose that is so weirdly placed at the tip of the trunk. It is such a fascinating thing to be taken to a forest and being introduced to all these animals that you're surrounded by. And I wish that many children, many parents, everyone get to see this wilderness. But for those who cannot see it, or, or I think uh, many a times there's a misunderstanding that um, uh, I think it's easy to fall in love with nature. But uh, there are times when uh, people nowadays with the gadgets and getting hooked to mobile phones and TV screens, we just block it out. We, we have no idea what is out there. We don't know. So I think it's upon a bunch of mentors or, um, or a whole bunch of naturalists to take it upon themselves to introduce it to people. Like un unless you introduce it to them, they don't know what is out there. And so that is what I'm trying to do as an artist wherein I am trying to depict the wild world out there and bring it on a canvas to people and showcase it so that people who aren't aware are able to get drawn to this world of fascinating, fascinating creatures. Um, this, um, many people might wonder what these are. These are not butterflies, but they are moths. And moths can also be so fascinating. Usually they refer to moths as something drab and dry and brown, but they can be absolutely as colorful too. Um, and I was introduced to moths by my father. Uh, my father uh, has been an entomologist. Uh, it's a study of insects, though he specialized mostly in social insects, which is um, um, uh, in uh, bees and ants. And uh, he would show moths and a whole lot of other things around the house and uh, that's how we got fascinated by from a very young age as well and um, amazingly speaking he's a he's a great artist himself and uh, I've seen his journals his uh, his books and they're absolutely fascinating so I'm not really surprised how he never discouraged me in what I am doing today as an artist um, he was very supportive and amazingly uh, he published this first uh, book, uh, Handbook of Organic Terrace Gardening. And uh, this has been my very first collaboration as a little, uh, little not a little child, I was in college by then. Um, <laughs> but um, this has been my first collaboration when, where I did these illustrations of uh, potting and how to mix things, how to do a moss pole and all those things. Um, and this has been my very first published work and with my with my father, so I'm so happy about it. Um, so it has been uh, definitely a great family influence and um, my brother, uh, uh, as Sandesh Kadur, as many of you might know, um, well-known filmmaker and photographer, he, his uh, influence has been tremendous, uh, not only earlier, but continues to be even today. And of course, my mother, uh, I'm sure she totally regrets that I, um, took up uh, or, or sending me to many art classes. She signed me up for a whole lot of art classes as a young girl uh, while in school, but then I'm sure she regrets it because she really hoped I would become a doctor or something like that. Uh, so secretly, I'm sure she's like, oh no, what did I do to my child? So, <laughs> but then she's been, I'm so grateful that she did what she did because that's how I, I took it forward, I guess. Um, this is a glimpse of one of the encyclopedias that uh, I grew up with um, and, and you see how um, it's filled with illustrations. Um, now I think many of the books that we get have like lot many photographs and you know pictures and not that it is wrong, it is amazing, but 
definitely if you would ask me to pick um it would be an illustrated encyclopedia over a photograph because uh illustrations have have a charm that i think somehow in a photograph it's missing like even right here in the image in the bottom right corner you see a photograph and see the illustrations next to it like you can play around with colors you can do selective coloring where you can show more importance to whatever is essential and you could fade out the background or like you you can play around in many ways of course now technology has improved and there are many ways of depicting um the wildlife also now and you know with photoshop it's like you know um really a uh, different ball game altogether right now but still any day i think my heart goes for illustrated journals and books and even today i collect them and um i'm super inspired by them just flipping through it like gives me a adrenaline rush and then i want to pick up a sketchbook and start uh, painting and illustrating um so these journals and these uh, these encyclopedias and uh, many bird guide books uh, we have grown up with posters all, all kinds of illustrated stuff and they really inspired me somehow i think at that point i really didn't know um, what effect or what significance wildlife was when i was a young girl young child but um, i think through the years when i look back and i connect the dots i know how much of an impact and how much of an amazing um um effect or impact it has had on my life um the initial few years um this is just a small glimpse of a cave painting and until recently um uh, this was recently uh, i think 2 3 years back uh, this cave painting uh, heard in indonesia and about um, until then uh, 37000 years ago was the last cave painting of animals that they had seen but this was um, this now dates back to 44000 years ago uh, so even the earliest of drawings by man has not is in been plants or landscapes or people themselves but it is animals so it's almost like taking back the tradition getting into that tradition of for 44000 years back that we artists are continuing to do right now till today and trying to show depict wildlife in the truest form as possible um i've been illustrating and painting in all kinds of mediums um earlier yes it was the cave paintings but now it's all the modern mediums like um paper murals um on wood on on cloth on uh, glass and a uh, canvas and a whole bunch of mediums i've been playing around with and uh, these are a bunch of illustrations made on paper and um, this project has been um uh an amazing um in uh, like a big stepping stone from my art career uh, i must admit um this was in collaboration with gorga science foundation uh, so it was after i graduated in 2005 um this project happened i graduated from art college in chitrakala parishad uh, well art college for me did not definitely train me as an artist it helped me build all the skills and how to mix colors how to compose how to put things together into into a into a nice beautiful aesthetic artwork but i it didn't train me into becoming a wildlife artist so wildlife bit is what that i've carried on by myself by my own interest and um by looking at things by talking to people by being surrounded by a whole bunch of naturalists and um excellent senior naturalists who have really been a great influence uh, for my journey as well and um other than the family of course and um um it has been um uh, just talking to researchers talking to these people who know so much about the natural world has uh, helped me uh look at wildlife look at nature in a much bigger better perspective than ever uh, so this project um, uh, was uh, one of the bigger projects that uh, happened um, uh, wherein i tried to uh, we had to illustrate the hummingbirds life size and keep them uh, illustrate the male and female of the hummingbird along with their 
nectar plant or uh, showcase a behavior or anything that is uh, specific to the particular species. So that really helped me. Uh, so we had to look at the scientific accuracy at the same time, make it aesthetic and beautiful for people to engage and notice and understand more. It is almost like a guidebook of sorts as well, but it's a big coffee table book. Um, uh, a sunbird, um, as we all know, hummingbirds are the project that I work for. Um, the hummingbirds are not found in India at all. Uh, they are only in the new world, only in um, uh, the Americas, from North America all the way down to South America. Uh, whereas what we have, which looks very similar to the hummingbird are these sunbirds. Uh, this is the painting of a fire-tail sunbird uh, of the Himalayas. Um, so this is like a sequence wherein the behavior I've tried to show is uh, uh, it's sallying down to catch insects and against it back on a perch. Uh, so um, it's, it's about um, the more you understand the natural world, you will understand what kind of behaviors to depict, what kind of angles are best to show and um, how to compose your painting. But the, all that involves being out in the natural world, like take yourself and observe nature and spend time um, recording, documenting everything that you see. So Sangeeta, this is a painting. Uh, this is the painting. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I thought you're showing a photo and now you will switch to the painting. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This is a painting. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, uh, I use something called an airbrush for the background. Uh, wherein ah, it's a fine dust of paint that gets sprayed onto the background. With focus effect. Um, uh, so I think that confuses people many a times if it is a photograph or, well, um, you know, and also four birds in a frame just to show that effect of what is happening one after the other, a sequence. Um, so this is one of my larger canvas paintings. Again, this is a monitor lizard. It's about uh, five feet by three and a half feet. And I took a lot of time to illustrate this. And um, um, a couple of years actually, but but also because I had many other projects in the way and I had to do a lot of research in between. Uh, so the best part about this is putting the composition together. It was a commissioned work and um, uh, a whole bunch of things worked for this one. Like I, I made, I went to the zoo and I uh, looked at monitor lizards and I made sketches in the field. Um, though the perspective you get is always from on top because it is in a big well like, you know, at the bottom. And um, uh, I was lucky to go to BNHS, the Bombay National History Society, where I was looking at birds basically, but the, at that point of time, but then I got to see specimens of preserved specimens of the monitor lizard. And that was great because I got to see the scalation of the lizard, uh, lizard and how different the scalation is near the mouth, near the back, near the eyes and on the tail, you know, and how the toes are. So it gave me a bigger perspective of what to look into and that uh, up close observation really helped a great deal in putting this um, uh, painting together. And, um, and um, another canvas work of um, a great hornbill. Uh, this was done for Art for Hornbills, an event where we, um, uh, it was one of the fundraiser event where we um, uh, sold a bunch of hornbill works, a bunch of artists about, uh, artists and photographers, about 15 of us, I think if I'm right. And we helped gener generate funds for um, the protection or uh, saving the hornbills. Um, uh, one of the, my very first mural works was at uh, Bandipur Jungle Lodges. Um, this was in 2005, right after I graduated. And this was um, my very first project um, right after I stepped out of college. So I'm really thankful for this because this got me glued into um, nature illustrations and painting. And since then, since 2005, there has been no looking back as to what I'll do, what career I'll choose. And um, that it has been one of the best uh, things. And this is one of the most recent uh, murals that is a work in progress, uh, just to show you the size of it. And um, even the earlier one was quite a big one. It was about uh, 50. 
uh, pretty much the same, uh, 15 feet by 10 feet high. Even this was a little more than 15 feet and about 10 feet high. And But this was, that was direct painting on the wall. And this is wherein uh, I have layered a MDF boards, um, uh, uh, four different layers, and I've tried to show a slightly, I, definitely not three-dimensional, but kind of a 2D um, effect to uh, paint and um, illustrate this. Uh, this was done at uh, Holemati um, Nature Information Center. Um, uh, this was one of the bigger murals that we did. And it was, again, not just me working there. It was a bunch of artists. And um, all of us put together, um, we worked on the mural as well. Uh, we worked on various elements. Um, I've also started working uh, on digital medium, um, wherein I use a Wacom and Photoshop, and I illustrate directly on on the Wacom pad and it reflects on the computer. Uh, so I think, um, sadly enough, that has been a little bit of a, uh, a digital medium does get you hooked. And uh, you sometimes, I, uh, the last two years, I've not done a painting. I started one recently, but then, uh, because the digital medium gives you so much flexibility of increase the changing the size and putting it moving it around and you know uh, so much flexibility that you know so sometimes you kind of get a little stuck to it and i think it's uh, um, time for me to break away from it a little bit uh, but this artwork was done for a3 uh, an organization in um, bangalore wherein they have a phd program and this kind of culminates uh, whole bunch of um, um, students PhD work put together uh, into one big uh, um, artwork, a poster kind of artwork. Um, another digital work, this was again for Holemati Nature Center and um, trying to depict the nightlife, the nocturnal life in the uh, forests of Malay Mahadeshwara Betta. Um, I've always been fascinated by, uh, even just day before yesterday, I saw the, um, uh, the this is the striped tiger butterfly, but I saw the plain tiger butterfly the other day, wherein uh, I live in a gated community with a lot of garden, and suddenly you see this butterfly from nowhere, it knows where to come, because it has host plants, and it knows on that particular host plant, it has to lay its egg so that the caterpillars, the larva can eat on the leaves of the plant. And then it becomes a pupa and then slowly the, after a few days, weeks, the uh, butterfly emerges. But it's amazing just to think so much greenery all around garden. It looks green, 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 green. And then suddenly this butterfly knows it can identify its host plant. It's just amazing to just, um, uh, you know, I, I wonder many times how it happens. It's just, it seems like a miracle and it just seems amazing. Um, so similar to this, um, I put together um, a collage of butterflies. Um, this is um, uh, again for a tree uh, in collaboration with Vipro. They built, uh, they, they grew a butterfly garden in their campus. And then uh, this was one of the posters that um, uh, spoke about the different butterflies that visit their campus. And uh, they also planted a whole bunch of these particular host plants in their campus. Um, so that they can attract butterflies and make sure they are they have a home to lay eggs and also um, a bunch of uh, nectar plants wherein mainly to feed for the butterflies to feed. So, uh, so this was just um, putting together a whole bunch of butterflies and these are very common butterflies of Bangalore that we see. Um, uh, regularly, if you go out into the garden, they, they love coming out when, when the sun is out, and uh, you'll see plenty of these butterflies um, fluttering around. Uh, Sangeeta, I love those plants beautifully. Okay. So, uh, uh, lata, and this is we call this uh, tiger's butterfly. What it is called? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, there's Australia. some other video that's coming. Oh, okay. I don't know. There was some overlap, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is uh, Cassia alata, the candle yes. uh, Cassia. 
and this is the giant milkweed. Uh, yes. I don't know if you see the cursor that I'm moving. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, um, and this is Ixora. This Ixora. is um, um, scarlet um, milkweed. This is blood, um, blood flower. Yeah. Yes. And the make spike. Stacky eater feta or the porter yeah. weed they call. So yeah, yeah, many of these. But Lovely. Beautiful. Butterfly loving plants. So you all should, do you have a butterfly garden? Um, yes, yes, we have. Oh, nice. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Beautiful. So um, I think I'm running out of time. So I'll just like run through. Um, so I love collaborating with people, as I mentioned earlier, and this is a whole bunch of my collaborations with different organizations and um, are coming out with books on, um, uh, you know, uh, on insects or butterflies or anything it could be. But um, uh, the best part about collaborating with organizations is that uh, the reach is a lot more bigger. And that is my intention or my aim to uh, reach out to a whole new different audience and uh, uh, try to take my work to a whole lot of eyes that can look at it, get inspired and uh, be able to look at the natural world in a different perspective and with a lot more respect or like, you know, a lot more interest basically. Um, another bunch of poster works and a uh, uh, whole bunch of, well, that, that's a field guide, uh, some games that I've collaborated with people with and storybooks that I worked on with Pratham books. Um, another, and uh, recently this is Leopard Diaries wherein I just made the illustration, the header images for each chapter, uh, but that has been received really well. People love it. and. Um, uh, it does tell a story and um, I'm glad that through art I'm able to tell those stories or make that connection and um, bring in that awe factor when people look at it. Um, uh, one of the best collaborations, so the book has been uh, written by Sanjay Gubbi and it is the same person that I collaborated with uh, much earlier to put together this uh, Holemati Nature Information Center at uh, Malay Mahadeshwara Betta Wildlife Sanctuary, Oman Hills, and um, worked with a whole bunch of artists um, uh, to put together. It was a lot of effort. Uh, Sanjay Gubi said, okay, take this project and make sure you get it done. And um, it, it was a whole lot of planning, a whole lot of work that went into putting this together. And this is the amazing team that I was able to work with. And um, each one are uh, driven and uh, inspired by nature. And it was absolutely easy to work with them because all of us were on the same page. We shared the same thoughts and similar wavelength and it was great working with them. Um, so this is how the nature information came together at the end of it. We had large format prints and uh, uh, you know, uh, illustrated works on the walls and somewhere interactive where you could actually move those panels to find the answers or find more information about each of these elements. Um, the best part about this nature center has been, it has been the most meaningful projects uh, definitely in many ways because um, uh, just to see the joy in the kids face when they walk in um, and they are quite surprised or like they're quite awestruck to see what they see. And just to know that all this is found in their own forest, in their backyard. And there, there's so many things that they could connect with, so many things that they could, um, you, you know, uh, uh, reflect to, like so many things that they could relate to um, when they walked into the nature center. But this gave a different perspective. It's not about, so there's so much poaching that goes on, so much hunting that goes on in their forest, but um, um, this really changed their perspective wherein they, uh, trying to put a seed to be proud of the natural world, of what we have uh, around us and with us. And Sanjay Gubbi has been doing an amazing job of uh, making sure the children regularly come to the nature center to see he has arranged vehicles but now of course with the pandemic doesn't happen but uh, making sure the local students uh, get to experience this nature center and take back something with them uh, at the end of it. 
Uh, one of the best part about uh, this uh, project was uh, we got a person from Bangalore to install these large format prints onto the wall um, to like lay, lay them out on the wall. And uh, this person had seen this seed dispersal and we were having lunch and sitting out, outside and he's happened to sit next to a creeper and uh, suddenly he saw the... Uh, saw a seed dispersing and then he's like is this what you have illustrated inside and I the next minute after lunch I saw him standing there and reading the entire thing so that itself made a difference because I know I could make that connect and I you know made sure that something uh, got into his mind uh, right or like just his bigger opened up his eyes to something new and something exciting uh, so that was really nice to uh, see this is the completed larger mural. Um, uh, I'll just end with this one. Uh, this is um, uh, nature journaling, what I do with the children on a regular basis, along with my friend Shilpa Shri. Um, so we um, uh, work with children and um, get them to look at nature up close and um, uh, try to document, record them, document them, and write about whatever they're observing. So that it's it's not just about writing, not just about drawing, but bringing them together to, uh, to make it like a journal so that it's more impactful. They're taking in stories and they're tr trying to learn about the natural world the whole time. And the best part is they're spending time outdoors. And um, um, I think that is the best gift that we need to give our children to spend time outdoors at this point of time. Uh, this is a whole bunch of journal pages by the children themselves and how focused they are if you really teach them how to look at things or see things and observe things. These are my own initial journals, how I started off. So uh, just doodles and sketches. And uh, so I'm sure if each one of us gets started on this journey, like, be something else at the end of the year or end of the month itself and uh, it's definitely an amazing uh, concept that each of you can do. Uh, I've traveled a whole lot of places to conduct these nature journaling sessions. We, we Shilpa and I run it in the name of Green Scraps and then um, um, we love um, engaging not just with children but with adults too and do a whole lot of workshops about seeing the art of seeing the natural world. Um, so yes, in the very end, you know, this is the most famous uh, proverb by uh, Baba Dion, we will conserve what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we'll understand only what we are taught. Uh, so uh, as an illustrator or an artist, um, if I'm able to inspire, or I know how good design can make a difference, and how um, uh, if a good design can make them really look at things and uh, get inspired and take that back home to, um, you know, engage with the natural world, to live in harmony with it, and to learn to coexist with the natural world, I think uh, that's the best thing that could happen uh, through my art. So um, I'll be grateful for that. And if uh, it does the job of inspiring, I think. Um, um, it's a lot more meaningful and uh, I've pretty much done what I have to do through my artwork. So um, yeah, I hope all of you enjoyed uh, the presentation and um, hope all of you will pick up your sketchbooks and pencils and try to document the natural world as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for your inspiring words, ma'am. Um, the members of the audience can now pose questions to Ms. Sangeeta, if any. Should I close this um, screen share or can I keep it open or should I close um, it? Yeah. You can close it. Okay. Hmm. So students, you can unmute uh, yourself and ask questions or whatever if you want to ask. Unmute, come on the videos and talk to Sangeeta. Sangeeta, I never heard this word, surprisingly, uh, nature journal, uh, journal. never. Yeah. yeah. 
So this is a concept that um, um, initially even I didn't know, but uh, I went to the US during my hummingbird project and that's where I learned about something called leech journaling. And I was like, why not you know, introduce that in India? And it's basically about, it doesn't have to be a perfect painting. It doesn't have to be a perfect sketch. It's just about the whole process of observing and trying to document that in your books. So it's, anybody can do it. It could be a three-year-old kid to an adult or eight-year-old, you know, person. Anybody uh, can get into nature journaling and um, uh, it's a great concept to uh, start working, like just start doing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, Mom, I have a question. I'll, I'll answer that. Yes, Karthi. Uh, hello, ma'am. A uh, big fan of your work uh, since a while. I ha uh, being a photographer myself, I, I shoot a lot of birds and insects too. And uh, as, as ma'am mentioned, nature journaling was something I heard very recently. Mm -hmm. So what should, how, how should I start, uh, you know, if I want to get into nature journaling or if mm -hmm. anybody wants to do that, how, how does someone start? Because, uh, okay, I'm a photographer. I understand that uh, uh, it takes observation and patience and, you know, sitting in one spot and doing it. But mm -hmm. how do you motivate someone who has never done this before? Yeah. Um, so I think, um, Kartik, you could, um, so what you, what I would suggest is one day uh, uh, leave your camera behind, okay, pick up a sketchbook and a pen and pencil and walk out it could be just in your balcony or even um, in a garden or a lake near your house anything just try to anything that inspires you like catches your attention try to sit next to it uh, so initially i think start with something more stationary like definitely the plants won't fly away so you could start with a plant or a seed or a flower or something um, and then once you try to try to just capture what you see Try to look at it as intently and as you know focused as possible and try to see if you can get that onto paper, okay? And while you're sketching, don't, you know, um, uh, like don't think of the end result, okay? How it will turn out to be, okay? All you have to do is just try to imitate it. It might be, you know, a first few tries that it might take to get it exact, but it is something that will happen gradually. Art is a skill that can be developed by everybody, but you know how to what perfection takes a little bit of practice and time, that's it. But then nature journaling is not about perfection, okay? It's about just truly recording what you see and writing, writing about your observation. And whenever you have any trouble writing, you could even think of things like, I noticed this and you can, you can start your lines with I notice or I observed, you know, or I, I remember if you think of something else that it reminds you of, you know, it's a combination of drawing and writing, I would say. It's basically field sketching and a combination of putting notes. It could even be a poem or anything. So there are many tips and tricks to start journaling. And we do have this page that we've recently started on Instagram. It's called uh, uh, green underscore scraps, okay? Uh, green scraps, uh, I can type it out for you. Green underscore scraps, okay? Like scraps of paper. Okay, so you could um, um, log into that. Um, you can follow that Instagram page. And we've recently started it and we keep giving tips and tricks and, you know, trying to nudge people to start a nature journal and, um, you know, how to take it forward. So hopefully that will help you as well. Thank you, mom. That helps. That's a nice Instagram page. Good. I'll also, I have also started following and I'll also definitely start uh, this. Yeah, we are trying to, Shilpa and I have started it and we'll hopefully keep it more, keep it going and uh, yeah, keep on putting stuff into it. Yeah. So yeah, don't hesitate to start sketching. I think sketching is something that um, is, a, is a block for many people. But just start moving your hand and trying to capture it and then you'll slowly gradually improve.
And there are many techniques online called blind contour, if you want to look it up, and uh, modified contour, wherein it really helps your eyes to look at things. And um, uh, that is what will get transferred or translated onto the paper. So. Okay. So any other question, student? So Sankita, uh, this nature uh, conservation center you did, how many years uh, it took you to complete, start so, to it? Um, it was, a, it, it took about one year, but I think the first uh, three, four months, it was the first project for me, right? So. It, took a little bit of a slow start and trying to, because I had to do all the research from scratch, from getting the procuring or like figuring out where to procure materials to everything it was from scratch, right? So the research bit took about three, four months and then the planning and then, you know, at least about six to eight months uh, of full on work, yeah. Okay, and, and that room was already constructed? Or that um, so it was a very small room, small place. It was already there. And then we tried to uh, renovate the whole interior bit and exterior bit. It was a very small building in the rural farmlands of uh, MM Hills. Yeah. But in that small building only, you have accommodated everything inside. We tried our best. We tried our best. Yeah. yeah. But it looks nice inside, whatever you're showing. The whole walls are done beautifully and those murals how they are mm. made um so the murals we used something called uh, you know cnc cutting machines like a laser machine but these are much bigger cutting machines and mm. uh, we design it on the computer where it has to cut and all that and then we feed it into that machine and it will cut the boards exactly in that that manner and then we layered it uh, front and back and uh, but the design has to be accurate and specific uh, and once that is done you layer it and then you put like layers of primer on it and then varnish and then you start painting varnish at the last sorry primer and then um, paint it um, uh, and but you need to pre-plan your design beforehand itself in order so to you, you are the only one, the main uh, brain behind the designing part? Yeah, I was the curator of the space. Uh, so um, I was in charge with what comes where, um, what designs uh, to include, what to exclude. So the entire designing bit was on on me, left to me. And um, because it was, it became a lot like a management job more than, you know, my art job. So I knew I needed people to help out uh, to, in order to finish this in time. So that's when I called in interns and a couple of artists, uh, friends who I know who do amazing work already and, you know, brought them on board and uh, Try okay. to put together the whole place. Yeah. So those people who you got on the board are also artists. Uh, yes, many of them. Uh, the main people, yes, are all artists. I got in a few interns who are interested in art and who know the basics in art, and uh, they also uh, joined in and. Uh, uh, contributed a whole lot. Some of them, one of the interns was absolutely amazing and uh, she kept on working uh, nonstop and uh, she really, especially she was great with digital arts, Smita, and she helped, um, you know, uh, keep the target and put together the whole, uh, many of the boards at the center as well. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, the pre-planning and the whole layouting and everything I would work on and work with the other artists to execute it. Yeah. Wonderful, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So any questions? Otherwise, I think we can end. Uh, Ma'am? Uh, uh, am I audible? Hi, Saurabh, I can hear you. Uh, yes, uh, hi, ma'am. Actually, uh, I, I, I just uh, had a small query as to like mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we are trying out on nature journaling uh, mm -hmm. so like as you mentioned like uh, there should be uh, 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 you mentioned like sketching and having a sketchbook so should uh, like uh, should there be like a certain specific tools as to what how we should draw and something or it could be just like mm -hmm. a, a pencil and a small or a paper and 
something like that yeah so what i would recommend is um, you know the best thing that you could carry on to uh, uh, into the field is something that is hard bound it just helps you um, you know because when you're walking around and sketching it gives you a good uh, base to hold the book and something small don't carry something very big to start with you carry something small a5 or smaller is also fine okay and uh, so when you're holding it in one hand and you're trying to sketch um, you use the most basic materials you can start with a pencil you can start with a pen directly you could start with color pencils so uh, any artist you know they take a little time to or anybody not just an artist take a little time to figure out what your medium is what yeah the me which medium you're most comfortable with so explore as many mediums and soon you will know which medium that you like most like for example myself um i when i'm out in the field i like sketching directly in the pen and what i also do i carry a small um, handheld watercolor uh, set and something called a water brush and um, if i have to add little color right there in the field you know i just do that uh, you know add color but then it's only if i have time i can add color otherwise no right so Uh, it depends if you are on a hike or trek you can just do sketches and you can walk around or if you are um, you know if you have time you can actually sit next to the plant or the bird and then you can observe the details and you can add it in so you can start with any medium to start with and yes of course the basic would be pen uh, you get pens that are just uh, you get agile pens uh, renolds racer which is my favorite uh, pen to use is it on the table yes i have it right here um always handy um so this or even you could go with um, stedler um, or even micron or anything if you're doing more details uh, this agile though it's super simple but then it is waterproof so even uh, when i'm putting out color or something that it's um, it doesn't smudge or um, nothing happens to the paper So uh, which pencils, paper is it? Uh, what pen is it? Reynolds Racer, or uh, uh -huh. now the name is changed to Rorito Flymax Gel. Uh, so it's waterproof. It's just ten bucks, but then works brilliantly. <laughs> and the best part is it has a refill, and I don't even have to buy the whole pen each time. I just have to buy the refill and then keep using it. So works brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, even with pencils, there are different uh, kinds of pencils. Uh, Two uh, B to six B. Um, how you basically use them is six um, B is a softer lead or eight B, wherein if you need to do darker strokes or something like that. But if you just want to sketch it, you can do it with a two B or a four B, um, uh, where the lead is a little harder and you get a uh, not a very dark line, but decent enough for any sketching. I hope I was able to answer your question. uh yes ma'am it was uh, quite an extended uh, tip ma'am thank you so much mm, is it stuck hello yes sangeeta he said uh, it was he understood i can yeah okay cool cool okay okay any other yeah. question so sangeeta i'll suggest next time just for such kind of uh, sessions you uh, make a small clip or ask someone else to record you when you are doing this nature generally okay sure sure you can do that in fact i there is a video that we have put together recently um i'm not allowed to share it yet but once they put it up the organization then i'll be able to share it across so then i'll send it over to you it gives the basics of nature journaling and how to go about journaling with nature yeah and yeah do follow the group uh, the green scraps uh, group and i'm sure you will get the bigger picture of how to go about it okay yeah any questions otherwise uh, mannat we can uh, take the session till to the end thank okay. you okay yes thank you so much and uh, yeah um, this is a great meeting you all and uh, thank you for inviting me miss sangeeta your inspiring words coupled with your stunning artwork truly made for an amazing sunday special session
You rightly said, it is easy to fall in love with nature, but it gets lost in the sea of electronic gadgets. People like you are ensuring that more and more people learn to enjoy the bounties of nature, one brush stroke at a time. And for that, we are very grateful. I also extend my gratitude to the August gathering present with us today for taking time out on a Sunday and contributing to our session with their infectious energy. Thank you for making this event a success. Please take care of yourself and your family, physically and mentally. I wish you all a good day ahead. Thank you.